Welcome to Northern Florida. I'm Joe Jarvis. I'm here with my dad, Harry. And what you're looking at is an entirely off-grid cabin. We're talking electricity, water, the bathroom, the kitchen, everything off-grid. It's not hooked up to anything. And he built this, Harry built this all by himself with a little help from me and a few other family members. But why did you do it? I did this because I lived in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is going totally off the rails. I needed a place to escape just in case I had to, and I haven't had to yet, but soon, soon. Um, so here we are, you know, in a, outside the city limits where you can pretty much do whatever you want. Built the cabin, made it off the grid because I don't want to be dependent on giant utilities or water companies or sewage companies or anything. And uh, we're here, you know, we can just live independently if we have to. Yeah, and this ticks a lot of the boxes that I often talk about. The unincorporated land where you can basically do whatever you want. And that, uh, you know, getting everything you need from your backyard so that, like you said, if the grid goes down, whether it's temporary or more permanent, if the supply chain uh, functions, doesn't function like it's supposed to, you have more power. You have more power by not being reliant on those things. So why don't we uh, give the tour? All right. Here, I mean, the, the concept was for this to be small, and small it is. It, uh, the main house consists of just a bedroom and a kitchen and a bathroom. Yep. Uh, but we added the screen room uh, to give us a little more space. And, of course, Florida can be hot, so having some outdoor space where you can retreat is, is pretty useful. Yeah, so the screen house is the newest addition. You can see the solar panel on the uh corner of the screen house and another one uh, on the porch and they run solar screen lights so that at night the lights come on and yeah. we had no no connection to the grid and what we're looking at up here is we have the solar panels looking a little dusty right now yeah uh and so you can see the solar panels and you can see the uh rainwater collection the gutter we got a thousand watts of solar up on the on the roof um solar is cheap these days it's a uh, dollar a watt so that's a thousand dollars worth of panels and gives you um, a kilowatt so what does the kilowatt get you uh, on a typically i get about two kilowatts hours per day two kilowatt hours per day which is more than enough for what i do the trick here is not to put up enough solar power to to use all the electricity you want the trick is to use the electricity that's available in the most efficient way so, and I mean, that's not even, you haven't even loaded up the roof there. You, you could put more up if you wanted to, but, oh, yeah. uh, but you run an AC at points, yep. you run a small refrigerator. Correct. Uh, and I mean, lights, coffee maker, coffee microwave, maker. I have a table saw in the shed I can use. I have an air compressor I can use. Yeah. Um, you just can't use them all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look over here at the, uh, rainwater collection system. So we have the gutters. Yep, water comes off the roof, goes down into the rain barrels. Got one at each corner. They're full now because we had biblical proportion thunderstorms yesterday. Um, and then the, the rain barrels are connected to each other. And then they're connected to this IBC, International Bulk Container, by this siphon. So that when the rain barrels fill, fill the IBC fills, Another one of these wouldn't be a bad idea, but I just You've gotten low at points, right? I've gotten low. I don't know if I've ever run out, but yeah. I've gotten low enough to worry about running out. So one more of these might be nice, and I might even want to put it over there and use the shed roof as a uh, another source of yeah. water. So then you got the you got the water here, yep. and uh, you then it goes through some filter filtration, right? Because this is this is like potable. You can you can drink it. Or you don't. Or I don't you... know. I've never had it tested. I mean, this this is full of algae and frogs and everything else. Who knows what's in there? But it goes through three stages of filtration, with the last one being a one micron carbon filter. So it looks pretty clean coming out of the faucet. Now, and I use it to brush my teeth. I use it to make soup, make coffee. I don't actually drink it by the gallon, but I probably could. Probably could. I just haven't sent it out to be tested. Uh, yep. Um... But just you know, to get the idea, this is all. This is the this is the guts of, of what you. So this is your water system. You don't well, have to this pipe. is the water system. If you look over here, what we got is we got a 12 volt battery, and we got 
behind it is a um, RV pump, a 12 volt RV pump that pumps the water. And this out. is just for the water. The battery, just for the, the water. That battery is not connected to the to the solar. Correct. It's well, it is. Well, it's, it's got its own solar. Okay. Uh, but its only purpose is to run the water pump. Yep. And and the and, the, uh, and that little panel up there is the power station. Okay, That's so the panel. panel off the side of the house that powers the uh, water pump. And that's, that's plenty that they never um, You know, we, we can have three, four, five days of rain and clouds and crappiness, and the pump keeps on or pumping. Nice. So, you also have a, uh, a full bathroom uh, yeah. and the, the shower, right? So, yep. you get hot water. Yep, this is a um, propane fired on demand hot water heater. It's made for a camper, actually. But the cold comes in here, the hot comes out here on demand. It it uh, and it runs off of this twenty gallon, uh, no twenty pound propane bottle. So the rain falls, comes off the roof, collects in these things. It filters. So it pumps first. Oh, it pumps. Okay, we got the RV pump. Yeah. It filters, and yeah. then when you want hot water, it, it comes from here, and it's it's from propane. Correct. The heat comes from propane, water yep. comes from the roof. In worst case scenario, if you run out of propane, you can take a cold shower. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Well, so we got the equipment shed here. We're going to take a look in the equipment shed. It's not very big, 8 by 8 But we do have some critical off-grid equipment in here. So what are we looking at? What we're looking at is a battery bank. We got 10 maintenance-free, deep cycle, 110 amp hour batteries sitting right there, um, which go into this inverter, 24 volts going into the inverter, we got 110 volts going out and up to the, uh, to the house, and then we, what we got here, we talked earlier about the solar panels, we got a solar controller, and this is a maximum power point tracking controller. What it does is it takes the solar power coming in and squeezes the last possible kilowatt hour out of it, no matter what time of day or morning it is. And uh, it just does a really great job of wringing every last kilowatt hour out of the available solar. Um, now, you were just telling me that you, you said you're floating or something. You the, Right. See these two lights flashing together? This means that the battery bank has reached full capacity and is now in maintenance you know maintenance charge which we call floating and you can see on the uh, display here 27.6 volts so a 24 volt battery bank wants to be at 27.6 volts when it's at maintenance charge you don't want it higher than that because you don't want to damage the batteries you don't want it lower than that because that's that keeps them full so we're starting the evening with full batteries and this is this is all from I mean, maybe it's not all from today, but yesterday it rained all day. It stormed. Right. There was no sun. So, if we, if we look, this is just a display that helps me read the data that's in here. If we look at this, we see that today we've had four kilowatt hours. We collected four kilowatt hours of electricity. We typically only collect two, but because yesterday was thunderstorms from morning to evening, uh, we didn't get a lot of sun, so it needed that extra two kilowatt hours to bring these batteries back up to full speed. It can go about three days of no sun at all before we have to run the generator. Okay. <laughs> so you do have the backup generator. We have a backup generator. So you don't here, lose. Okay. But, we, but at this time of year, we never need to use it really. It's mostly in December when there just isn't a lot of sun. The sun's low in the sky. The days are short. And it just takes half a day to charge the batteries back up if it's sunny and then if we have a cloudy day well you know you get three cloudy days in a row you might have to run the generator now could you add more batteries here and have a longer life or, or are you working with some sort of efficiency here where the number of panels you have and the number of batteries it all kind of lines up to they, they go hand in hand if you ha i could add more batteries but i still but then it takes more power to charge them so if we had a lot of sunny days and not a lot of cloudy days, more batteries would help. But if we have a lot of cloudy days, then more panels would help because then on the sunny days we could charge a bigger battery bank. So they got to go together. Yeah. So you're you're in it. It's a little bit of, okay. So oh, it's cooling off now. Yeah. It, has, oh, it, nice. it keeps itself at a happy happy temperature. 
if we look over here, we can see we're at four percent. The refrigerator probably just came on. Okay. It was using four percent of the uh, available capacity. Yeah. But it's a hot day. It's 83 degrees out. So. Right. And that's this is like it's not that many batteries. It's just interesting to me that this is ten batteries. We'll, we'll, ten we'll, lead we'll, acid batteries. They're not lipos. They're not lithium batteries. They're lead acid batteries. They were 160 bucks a piece. So this is 1600 dollars worth of batteries. But that allows me to run everything I want to run. Now you're not gonna you're not gonna run like you were on the grid. I mean you could buy you could double the size of this and run like you were on the grid. Um, but I double the money and double the money. Yeah, right? and this is right now. This is a sort of vacation home for you. It's not. It's not. It's not your full time home, but it could be. Well, I live here more than half the year. Oh, that's true. That's true. So uh, we've collected sixty seven kilowatt hours so far this month, and it's the twenty eighth. So um, you know we'll end up with over seventy kilowatt hours. But do the math on that. Even with today's exorbitant uh, rates, thanks, Brandon. We. Um, that's still not worth a lot of money. I'm not. I'm not breaking even, except for the fact that I'm off the grid and I don't have to run, have the electric company run miles of wire for me. Right. Okay. So there's a few things. There's there's connecting to the grid and the costs uh, of that. But really, what we're talking about is is this worth it from a dollar perspective? Like, not really. It's it's worth it from the independence perspective. It certainly is. It absolutely is. I don't get a bill every month. I don't have to answer to anybody um, when. When there's thunderstorms and hurricanes and the grid goes down, I'm still up and running. I'm still yeah. microwaving hot dogs. <laughs> so we can power pretty much anything we want, um, not necessarily at the same time as other stuff. But I got a vacuum here, a shop vac, I got a table saw over there. Both of these will run on this system. Uh, the table saw sucks down a ton of electricity, though, so you better run it on a sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> Do your work on a sunny day. Honey, I'm home. Hi, honey, I'm home. Sorry, a little bit of 50s uh, sitcom humor there. So this is the house. It's small. It's a small house, um, but it's got everything we need. We have a microwave oven. <laughs> we have a refrigerator and freezer. It's tiny, but it happens, you know, we got ice cream. We got frozen beer mugs. Speaking of which. You know what? Um, I actually need a beer. You do? So I'm going to... Funny you should say that. I just happen to have a beer. And let me see. This is for, purely for science. <laughs> oh, it's cold. It's, it's cold, cold let beer. Me, let me see. In my, from my cold refrigerator. So <laughs> this was cooled by the sun. It was... Yes. Interesting. Interesting you should say that. It's cooled by the sun. That's not a thing we usually think of. <laughs> um, but yes, the sun shines on the solar panels. The... Solar controller turns it into useful energy. The battery is stored, and the inverter turns it into AC power to run the refrigerator, and the refrigerator keeps our beer cold. <laughs> what more do you need? Uh-oh. There you go. And, so, and this is what I'm saying, is that you're not exactly roughing it. If you, if you have oh, hell no. chilled, <laughs> if you have chilled <laughs> mugs, right? you're not exactly roughing it out here. So you're still, uh, you know living in the lap of luxury you have a couple different propane tanks uh so obviously one is for the uh water heater and then you have a stove here right that you... it's a gas stove and i would never have anything uh else it's a, it's a propane fired apartment size stove you know we got we got the oven we got the four burners i would never have anything but a gas stove sorry brandon um, <laughs> but gas just works better yeah. gas and Good old-fashioned American cast iron. Yep, okay. <laughs> Good. Um, and so then, um, so when I turn this on, we're going to hear the pump kick on. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe nothing will come out. Oh, no. Look, it looks like a normal faucet. What do you know? Wow. And you know why the pump didn't come on? Why? Because we have an accumulator tank. You have an accumulator tank. <laughs> so what is, what is, here, do we have a, do we have a visual on that? The accumulator tank is right here. It holds two gallons of water. Okay. And its entire purpose is to accumulate a certain amount of water so that the pump doesn't come on every time you turn the water on. Nice. And then uh, over here, besides this is, the empty beer cans, <laughs> besides the empty beer cans, this is the three-point uh, filtration system. Correct. So we got 
a, a, a general purpose filter here. And um, that takes out, you know, most of the stuff, tadpoles and, you know, <laughs> algae and stuff. Yep. And then we have a multi-purpose filter that is like 10 microns and it takes out uh, anything that that missed and some of the chemicals because the carbon, carbon, if you remember your high school chemistry is likes to bond with things and it bonds with everything that's not itself and so it takes a lot of stuff out of the water then we have the third filter which is a one micron now i don't know if you know your uh if you remember your high school physics but one micron is really really little mm -hmm. um in fact bacteria probably won't even go through a one micron filter um but like i said i've never actually had the water tested so by the time it gets through that one micron carbon filter this is like pristine water. I mean, you look at it. Well, let's let's, let's take a look. Oh, let's take a look. look. I mean, looks pretty clear to me. Especially when you're saying that there's there's literally frogs living in the barrels. In the barrel, literally yeah. live frogs yeah. in the brain barrels, but so they the, don't fit through the they don't even fit through the um, um, little screen thing. Um, but this takes the frog pee out, or is that? The carbon takes the frog pee out. <laughs> okay. No, it literally does. Yeah, it does, Car yeah. Yeah, because it just bonds to everything. It right. sucks it right out of there. So, I'm not sure if frog pee is really toxic anyway. <laughs> so, so it's a full kitchen. It's, it's like you kitchen. said. It's small. It's small, but you have everything. You even got the coffee maker. You got the microwave. You got the coffee maker. You can't run the microwave and the coffee maker at the same time. But the refrigerator is really low power, and you can run that with anything. Yeah. Um, you can run the AC with the refrigerator. I haven't tried. We only run the AC at night, uh, but we haven't even got to there yet. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we charge our laptops. We charge our phones. Uh, wifey has a uh, keyboard that she practices her piano on. It's like you can just plug in anything you want. You can yep. plug in your vacuum. You can. I mean, we could have more stuff. We could have a waffle maker, but we just <laughs> don't make waffles here. <laughs> we could have a TV. Uh, but we don't watch TV here. Yeah, so, even, even better. I mean, yeah, cool. it's uh, it's a different life here for us. It's in, it's warm most of the time, and um, you don't. I mean, this is too small of a house if you lived in the frozen north, because you you know right. you're not gonna like spend half of every day outside when it's forty below zero. So, um, but there's very few. A uh, small amount of time that you really wouldn't enjoy spending outside in, in, in Florida. This, here. In northern Florida. Northern right. Florida. Even northern Florida. Even if it still it's, gets hot. It still gets hot. Even in, um, it might be like 20 degrees some morning, but by that afternoon it's going to be 50 degrees. So yeah. go outdoors. Have fun. Yep. Let's take a look at the bathroom. Cause it, so this is this is what, you know, the, the key features of all the... Uh, of, of living you need the kitchen you need the bathroom uh so finish pouring the beer and we'll uh <laughs> well the key feature is beer we moved into this house before it was finished but wifey had one requirement indoor bathroom <laughs> so the very first thing that got built inside this house after the windows uh, were in it was still in tyvek um was the bathroom so so do we have a uh do we have a light here where's the light Lights over here. Okay. Um, yeah, actual lights with switches like yep. normal bathrooms. We got actual hot and cold running water. Same, same water. This isn't even a small bathroom. This is like not super small. Yeah. No. And you have uh, we have a shower, not not a bathtub, but we got a shower. Yeah. I, I did a little bit. of... <laughs> you were having some issues with the heater, the water heater. It was the government mandated non-scalding thing was fighting with the water heater so okay. i could never i could either have scalding hot water from my non-scalding thing or i could have freezing cold water so i took it out and i put in regular old ball valves so yeah. now i can have water any temperature i want <laughs> um, but yeah full so you know normal size normal shower yeah we, um, we can just proof. <laughs> there we go. Shower. I took one this morning after my run. Yep. Okay, now you can hear the pump kick now, on, kick on we, a little bit. We used up that two gallon reserve, so now yep. the pump's going. I don't know if you can hear that on the yep. hill. But what's different in this room than in a normal house is the toilet. This is not a normal toilet. This is a composting toilet, which is a little bit of an 
this no more because it really doesn't do a lot of composting all by itself. It's a nature's head, and it, um, it this is it. It's self-contained. It's screwed to the floor with these little, you know, thumb screws, um, and it's vented to the outdoors with a little muffin fan, no pun intended, and it's a separating toilet. So you, you know, you the pee goes in this bucket, number two goes in that part, that part has organic matter in it. A little uh, coconut, coconut core? Coconut core, sawdust, um, wood chips, yeah. peat moss, anything, you know, molder, molding leaves, pretty much anything organic. I use um, wood chips because they're cheap. Yeah, it doesn't smell. You can't smell it. You know, you got your little um, down for two, up for one lever here. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then every couple weeks, I have to unbolt it, unplug it, and drag it outside and dump it in the compost bin. Yeah. Um, but yes, you can compost human manure along with everything else, and it turns into, you know, in a very short time, it turns into totally innocuous stuff, and the compost bin takes years to fill up. Yeah. So, um, and what was that book? You, you read a... Was it called Humanure? Humanure, the Humanure Handbook. Yeah, correct. And it's it's not as it's not as sketchy as people think it is. It's actually no, a little more work. I, I mean, I've said before that when you have an off grid house, what you're doing is you're trading some of your labor for the convenience uh, and the monthly bill that the utilities send you. So you got water and sewer, and they charge you every month for that. Just go away. You don't have to yeah. think about it. But if you're going to be off the grid, well, you got to think about it. But right. then you don't get the bill. Yes. <laughs> so. Now you could have a toilet in here. You have the water. You you could have a you could you could put in a septic and and have a toilet. Uh, but you went for the composting toilet because you don't because you didn't have to add the septic. Toilets use a lot of water. I I, okay. I think um, I would need a lot more surface area to collect water if I was going to have a flush toilet okay. and, and a septic because they go they they suck down water like you wouldn't believe. Hmm. And it's, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to use potable water, water you could drink, to to flush your toilet fish down into the septic system. Especially when, again, people are weird about this, but it's it's like valuable. Uh, when you compost it, it's like that's good for. Uh, after it's composted, it's totally broken down any pathogens, and it's it's oh, yeah. you can feed the earth with it so it's yet another uh, valuable resource it is and if you're still sketched out then then feed your um uh, ornamentals yeah it. use it use it on something that's not not food, not a food right. or 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 on a tree like so okay so you, you know you put it in your eating spinach or something like eh, maybe that's a little sketchy but put it around a not tree really, but, yeah. not really but <laughs> still if you put it around an apple tree it's not even it's not even uh you know getting close to what you're actually eating right um Thermophilic bacteria go after this stuff, and they can break down anything. Um, it's just not going to be... It, it's just not a thing. <laughs> you know, humanure isn't really actually toxic in the first place. Yeah, this is, <laughs> I talk about, like, pendulum swings a lot. And we've kind of swung pretty far away from understanding where our food comes from, where our shit goes, <laughs> where, you know, it, it, and it's not actually that bad of a thing to kind of think about these things and, and think about, you know, it's not just out of sight, out of mind. I'm sure somebody's taking care of it. I'm sure the government's taking care of it. It's like, no, you know, when you design a house like this and you build it yourself, you actually have to think about all these things and yeah. it's not that hard and it's, and it's not that, uh, you know, it's not that difficult to, to deal with all these things in a safe and uh, beneficial way. Right. So in the old days, everybody had an outhouse. Yeah. Um, and but an outhouse is way less ecologically efficient than this. Uh, we'll show you the composting bins later. But essentially, an outhouse it all goes in the ground and eventually it fills up and you gotta cap it. But it takes decades and decades to because it's not in the upper layers. Um, to, to it's not efficiently composting, right? Right. In, in the compost piles. You see, you get the air because you need oxygen to feed right. it, and it's and yeah, and rain and water and it and it just compost. And then when you want to use that compost for compost, um, it's there for you. Yeah, we got one more room, a little two room cabin. Just yep, you know. Uh, I mean, it's is this bigger than a trailer? 
I don't know. Not not a double wide. Not this is only no. um, 288 square feet plus another 144 for the uh, screen room. Okay. Um, so. So it's it's. Well, here let's let's uh, we, we 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 can talk about this outside afterwards. But in the so, north, I would have built built this with with a another room with like like a living room yeah indoors that you can heat but since the whole point of being down here is to live outside right it's so yeah. I, I can live out mostly outside i spend you know 90 percent of every day outdoors. yeah so um right so here we got the sin bin <laughs> um <laughs> really it's just a queen size bed it's a small room nine by 12 well it's less than 12 because the outsides are 12 um we got the AC though, but here's the thing: we have an AC, and we can. It's hooked up to our grid. We can turn it on, and cold air comes out in a minute. <laughs> um, so, in the dead of summer, when it starts to get warm in here, we can. Um, you know, like you can't run this thing like for hours and hours and hours because it uses like 400 watts or something, but it, you can run it plenty long enough to cool the bedroom down to the point where you're going to sleep at night, you know. Um, and again, this was another concession to wife. I <laughs> You would have sweated out. I can I can sleep and sweat at the same time and she can't, but whatever. <laughs> um, she's she's worth it. So, yep. <laughs> she's, a, she's a champ. She <laughs> goes along with the, uh, well, I mean, you know, it's it, it is a good idea though to have to have these sorts of things to be off grid and independent. It's she's on board with that too. I she mean, is she is on board. She she is a champ because yeah. I mean this room is still in sheetrock and hasn't been taped or painted. No ceilings. Um, the other finally finished the kitchen with counters and paint and not still not ceilings. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to that. And once again, you know, it's just a normal house. Flip flip the light switch. Like, like you were saying, the roofs or the ceiling's not quite done yet. You're, you've been working on this for a few years, but you're only here half the year. Right. And uh, actually, how much, how much does this cost? Do you know? Do you have any idea? I, I have kind of an idea. I mean, the solar, a thousand dollars for the panels, sixteen hundred dollars for the batteries. So, three grand for the solar all the components that went into the solar. So that's what I mean when I say it, you know, at 30 cents a kilowatt hour, that's a lot of kilowatt hours. Yeah. But compared to running wires all the way from the street, you know, hundreds of yards in here, and then being beholden to the electric company, wherever right. they feel like charging you, um, it's worth it. But if you um, had a guess for the entire, for the whole thing. If I had to guess for the whole thing, I, I don't know, between thirty and forty thousand dollars. Okay. Not counting the land, but that's not bad. No, that's, not bad. that's really not that bad. And but I did the work myself. And, right. And you did. Right. <laughs> right. But you. Uh, but it's the the just for the materials, and this was a lot of it was pre um, shortages and everything. When, pre shortages. You know, when yeah. when when they you know deliberately tanked the economy by, who would have thought? shutting down the entire economy you can't just uh start it back up again just like that <laughs> but um so yeah, yeah i probably spent two grand just on the screen house <laughs> right this is this is and we we actually talk about this we're like uh you know you want to build a shed you want to do a screen house you want to do anything like a thousand bucks plus whatever it's you right. start at a thousand bucks you can't get you can't get away with it yeah you know um hey have you thought about harvesting your own wood or is that just too much work that's way more than it's worth um well, I don't have any wood to harvest. This yeah. is pretty much denuded of trees already. Right. Um, but my sister, yep, um, harvested her. She she has a big farm in, in another part of Florida, and she bought a sawmill and she right. harvested the trees and used them to make horse corrals. Yeah. Because she raises horses. So. And I guess the whole thing is your, you know, <laughs> you got to balance the money you already have and the time you have. There's time. There's money. There's there's the resources that you have on the property, and uh, yeah, I guess that's a lot to think about. But yeah. I mean, other people, you know, sit down once a week and spend a couple hours paying bills. Um, I sit down, well, I stand up uh, um, once a week, and I maintain stuff. I empty toilets and and I um, check on batteries, and you know, I think in the in the long run, I'd probably have less maintenance than you do. If you have a uh, house, yeah, 
I mean, because you can't ignore that stuff. You got to pay the water bill. You got to right. pay the electric bill. You got to pay the sewer bill. You got to pay. Um, there's another bill. <laughs> uh, and, and I built the house to be kind of maintenance free with the plastic. The, yep. The pressure treated wood in the deck, the plastic windows, the plastic siding, the uh, architectural yep. 50 year shingles. Now, if you're 25, 50 year shingles might not sound good enough, but to me, eh, that'll, that'll cover it. Somebody else's that's, problem. That's going to be somebody <laughs> else's problem. <laughs> Um, so the only thing we're not going to go in the in the attic because there's not it's not there's not much up there but there is more space uh, up in the up in the attic. I had originally intended for that to be a loft, uh -huh. but we are here in some of the coldest weather in North Florida, which isn't that cold. So I I uh, nixed the uh, the loft idea and put ceilings in so that we could insulate them to keep the heat down here. Uh, yeah. But you can stand up there in the right. middle. So the idea was to have like maybe another sleeping area up there if you needed it. Yeah. Uh, it, it storage. Could still happen. And, yeah. Storage. It could yeah. still happen. Um, if you look out here, um, the cameraman will get the uh, B roll and uh, insert that. But uh, you can see where I did leave access to the loft. Right. Uh, if you if you ever needed it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the, uh, you even got a free cat out of it. Free cat, yeah. This place just attracts cats and gopher turtles. And he is, he is wild. He just showed up. It's, He's it's, a stray cat. He yeah. showed up. Um, I think he keeps showing up because we feed him. Go figure. <laughs> um, this is Sandy. Yeah. Sandy just hangs out. I think Sandy feels safe here, but, but you can see that sometimes Sandy comes back with uh, his self ripped up a little. Yeah, it was uh, Thomas Jefferson said, I prefer dangerous liberty over comfortable slavery, servitude, something like that. Servitude. The point is, <laughs> is that Sandy might come back with some bumps and bruises, but he's free. He's actually, he's free. He's not, uh, you know, okay, so I guess maybe he's a little bit of a welfare queen. You feed him. <laughs> well, but you never know what. I mean, he's come back here with dead animals that, you know, dead snakes, dead. And rats. you are gone for part of the time, so he still manages to, to survive, huh? Yep. He has his he has his liberty. He goes off, you know, he hangs out here, being a furry little kitty, and um, who knows what kind of rodents and stuff he kills for yep. us. We don't know. We don't care. We feed him. And so he shows up, but then he's gone again, sometimes days at a time. Yeah. And sometimes he comes back, you know, with his ears chewed up. And so the like indoor that. cats are peaceful slaves, but the outdoor cats have dangerous liberty. They, they have to contend with whatever might be out there trying to eat them, um, including other cats. You know, that's just what cats do. Cats roam around in the night and they're being cats. And men are supposed to be free. They're not yeah. supposed to do what their overlords tell them. Right. And it always comes back to it. That's why that's why we're doing this. If you're watching this, you're you're interested in the same thing that we're interested in. We're we're not a, there's a lot of people out there that are thinking the same way. You know, things have gotten a little sketchy. And it's time to swing that pendulum back and and take a little bit of that power back and say, "No, I'm not going to depend on all the outside world that I don't even understand how it works. I don't know how the sewer system works, I don't know how, I'm sure the government's looking into the uh, food supply, right? You can just go buy whatever you want at the grocery store, and I'm sure it's fine. Sure it's fine. And at some point, you gotta start saying, you know, you gotta take care of yourself. Maybe it's not fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you were living out here, you could um, homeschool your kids, and the government would have no influence on them. You wouldn't have to worry about the agenda, because the agenda is whatever you say the agenda is. Yep. So, you know, Florida is great with homeschooling too, and you can start a micro school. Like they, you uh, can register a. Um, they, they require you to register. Okay, so I guess that's the one downside. But then once once you you tell them that you're doing your own private schooling or your own, um, you can literally just start a private school in Florida, and then they leave you alone, and it's up to you. They the law specifically says that they do not check into the curriculum. It's sort of like use at your own risk. You know? Yeah, uh, Joe's sister homeschools or unschools, unschools her children 
Even in Massachusetts. <laughs> in Massachusetts. Um, and they are pretty bright kids. You can't put anything past them. They know what's going on. Well, that's the old joke that, you know, be like, well, I don't want to I don't want to homeschool my kids cuz they'll be uh, weird. But these days, uh, you know, you don't want to send your kids to public schools cuz they're going to come back a tranny <laughs> or whatever. I mean, I sent my kids to public school. See what happened? A lot has changed. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, but a lot has changed. A lot has changed. Lot has changed. We, yeah. we happen to have a really good public school system. So, yeah. But nowadays, no, This um, you want to live here. You want to live in the trees. You want to live with the animals. There's, you, know, right. you know, there's goats and there's pigs and there's chickens. And, um, and you're going to learn. Yeah. You're going to be way better off with that kind of stuff yeah. than what you're going to learn in public school. And since we're talking about everything off the grid, Everything from the electricity, you know, from the starting point of what you need to the ending point of, of uh, composting your scraps and your humanure, you know, the compost pile is an important part of that. You got, you, you got the, uh, you, can see, you can see the life in there. We got, yeah, we, we compost everything organic. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's organic, uh, meaning that it is or was alive at one time, it, um, like a coffee filter, and that was alive. It was part of a tree that got made into paper. What we got here is we got we got an eggshell full of maggots. Um, but they're alive. They're working for us. They're working for free. And it's and it really is amazing to have so much value in the land and your scraps and just and things that people just throw into the trash and and forget about and it goes to a landfill. Instead you get value out of it. There's so much value to be had all around you, you know, if you're willing to, right. you're just willing to do it. Um, so, you know, every day or day and a half, I dump the pea bucket in here, adds valuable nitrogen to the, to the mix. Um, and then every couple of weeks, I dump the solid waste in here. You know, you're like, whoa, ew, a toilet full of poop. Well, no, it's a toilet full of poop mixed with wood chips and, They've already, that's already, I don't know. Um, Some crazy mushrooms in there. <laughs> yeah, but then I cover it with this straw. I mean, hay, the hay came from, is used hay from the goat pens. And the, and then you say, oh, well, you know, the animals are going to get in there. You know, they're going to spread it all around. No, once you cover it with the straw, they don't. It doesn't smell either, you know? Yeah. I can't smell anything in here. It doesn't smell like, like even your trash can smells worse than this. Oh yeah, exactly. And then the bacteria, especially the thermophilic bacteria, you got to learn about those. They break down everything. So the latest addition is the greenhouse. Um, we decided to add this because the house can get warm in the summertime and you don't want to run the air conditioning a lot if it's not sunny out. You can run it in the sun because it's free, but if you've had some cloudy days, it could still be hot and you don't want to run the AC until nighttime when you want to sleep. So we got a screen room and we have, um, it's pretty good size. It's 12 by 12. Nothing's attached except with screws and these blocks are sitting right on the ground. I elevated it because we get you know, Noah's flood kind of rain down here in this part of Florida. We got some yesterday. We got like three inches of rain yesterday. <laughs> and if this wasn't elevated, it would be underwater. So, um, but you can come out here. We got a nice breeze blowing through. It almost always comes from the south. And it's coming through, blowing right through. Um, you know, pick up some cheap furniture, Home Depot or Amazon, and you can come out here and just hang out. So... I'll come out here sometimes in the evening, like right around now. And I'll sit in this chair and I'll put my beer on the beer shelf and I'll read a book. I'll read out here and it's just like beautiful out here. And this is the lights are a separate system? So the lights are powered by that little tiny five watt solar panel. Yep. Now it's not like you could, you know, read out here by those lights, but you, oh, okay. but you won't triple the furniture. Right. Now, they have planned to put a real live electrical outlet out here someday. I just can't quite figure out how to get it out here without tearing my walls apart. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe I'll go straight from the equipment shed through the ground and up here. Yeah. 
Um, I should have planned for an outdoor outlet, but I didn't. But once again, <laughs> like, uh, not exactly roughing it. You can, We're you not can, roughing it. You no. can off-grid it and Hell still kind of have all the comforts. Yeah, yeah this is the life. This is life. We're, we're leading the life. We're out <laughs> here in the woods, and um, but we still, but we're not that far from cities. You know, right. forty-five minutes to a city where yeah. we could, where we can go out to a theater. Where we could uh, go out to dinner. We could go by, the, you know, look at the ocean. Yeah, there's still grocery stores. There's grocery still, stores yeah. are five, five, ten, fifteen. Well, I guess. Well, all right. Well, maybe fifteen minutes away to the grocery <laughs> store. But but it's fifteen Florida minutes. You know, there's no traffic here. Country mile. It's a country mile. Yeah, there's no traffic here. You can, you know, you know how long it's going to take to go places because it's not like the Southeast Expressway where, you know, you could be tied up for like hours trying to get in or out of Boston. It's like, nope, you know how long it takes to go here because it takes the same time every time. <laughs> so that's the tour. Uh, again, entirely off grid. We got everything we need. Um, including fuzzy little including kitties. Including fuzzy little animals, which I believe is a necessity. They just show up. <laughs> but really, the entire point is that this can be done. It is being done. I've helped do it. I don't know, you know, I, I wouldn't say I obviously couldn't do this all by myself, but I talk about this uh, mentorship thing on this, on this property I want to build. And this is one of the uh, prime candidates to show people how to... <laughs> how to build their off-grid structures uh, and, and you know, have everything you need in that, just from nature. So that's the basic overview, but I need you to comment and tell me what you need more information on, what you liked, what you didn't like, and uh, if you want to see more of Harry and have us spout off about politics uh, a little bit more than we did in this video. So again, I'm Joe Jarvis. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Come back and see me again soon.